What's an oh shit moment, where you realized you've been doing something the wrong way for years? Found out I was lighting incense wrong. Boyfriend and I got a bunch, to add to our collection of nice smells and we would light them, and they would just start a little inferno. Convinced we were buying cheap, garbage incense we stopped using them. I proceed to buy a different brand in a hope those would work. I test light and same thing it just goes up in an inferno. Rumor informs us you are supposed to blow them out once they catch. Oops. Edit, Reddit Silver. Thank you so much. As well as a grandma edit. Who knew possibly burning the apartment down would lead to such a response to seemingly common knowledge of how incense work. Hahaha <laughs> this is the best answer here. I love this. Darn cheap sticks, just made another inferno. I owned a light blue colored microwave for about 3 years, that a family member gave me for a housewarming gift. Thought it was cool, never saw a blue microwave before. One night, a buddy asked why I never took the blue plastic wrap off my microwave, then proceeded to peel it off for me. Damn, that bitch is silver. Still miss my blue microwave sometimes though. Has anyone ever painted their microwave? I didn't expect to wonder about this today. I didn't expect to wonder about this today. Great new tagline for all of Reddit. That you do, in fact, need to disassemble your laundry dryer and clean the lint out from underneath the drum once per year. I'm 31 and never knew this, no one ever said anything, never saw anyone do this. Crappiest thing is, that my parents also learned this the hard way, and never bothered to give me a tip, when I bought my first dryer. Luckily, the wife and I discovered the lint build up when changing the rollers. I said to my parents wow it really builds up in there, and they were like oh yeah you need to do that like once a year. Where are it? Hold up a hot minute here, what do you mean I need to disassemble my laundry dryer and clean the lint out from underneath the drum, are you talking about pulling the dryer out, and taking the back off the dryer, or what do you mean? I'm 31 and have never heard of this. Growing up we had the same dryer for 20 years, and never once did this. I'm questioning everything about my life. My old dryer just had a tray you could pull out from the bottom to remove the lint. If I was supposed to do more than that then I have no clue. I used to pull my pants down all the way at the urinal. I was with my little cousin at the mall. I was 13, he was 9. We went to pee at the urinals and I saw him pull his pants all the way down. I was like, no. And explained how to use the zipper. A guy comes walking out of the stall and says, good work showing that boy how to get that hose out. A guy comes walking out of the stall and says, good work showing that boy how to get that hose out. I can't think of a more inappropriate sentence. I used to think just reading the material was how everyone studied, so that's how I did it too. I never quite understood why my grades were so low, it'd be like I read the page, idk what happened, until I saw my friend making flowcharts and summaries, and I was like we don't have to do that you know, and he was like nap, I'm just studying. It blew my mind, how much better my grades got. Edit, bet you thought you were real original coming up with that username joke, huh? Bet you thought it never heard it before, huh? Well who's not smart no oh oh well, still me, okay yeah I'll go home sorry. Looking back on it, I was never really taught how to study. I don't think a lot of people were, and for some people it's instinctual, but it isn't for everyone. Schools should hold a course on various methods of studying. I'm learning it properly now for the first time as a mature student returning to university. FML. Pro tip. Testing yourself is by far the best way to enhance long-term recall. Think, cue cards and mock exams. Even better when they are open-ended questions like, explain the seven sins of memory, and you have to name and explain each one without notes in front of you. Do that once, and you'll probably get over 90% on your exams. Edit, thanks for all the added suggestions. Just to clarify, my advice comes from the results presented in my class on cognitive psychology from studies comparing various studying methods. Spaced repetition of the material and testing are by far the best ways to facilitate strong recall.
There are also better methods of encoding and test condition factors to consider, etc. when studying, but I'm not going to condense a few chapters of my textbook here. I didn't find out that I was supposed to punch out for lunch until my third job. And even then it was because a cowalker mentioned it in passing that they were clocking out for lunch. That's freaking awesome. I cannot believe none of your bosses did not ever say anything to you. At my first and only full-time job I've had they didn't require you to clock out for lunch. They said they just docked 30 minutes off your pay so that you would have more time to get out to the break room and eat instead of everyone lining up 5 minutes before lunch to try and hurry out to the break room. Living in a foreign country where I was actively learning the language. Social cues go a long way when learning a language on the spot. That being said, someone once said a phrase to me while serving a hot dish, which I assumed as meaning excuse me. After going through crowds and lines, replicating the same phrase in an attempt to be respectful of those around me, I abruptly found out that the phrase actually meant enjoy. Hindsight completely makes sense. The odd looks I would get by saying enjoy while squeezing past people all of a sudden made sense. Edit, wowzers, you'll really know how to make a grown man blush. Thanks for the gold and silver you beautiful beautiful strangers. I'm glad my mistakes bring such enjoyment and hilarity to the world. So this happened while I was living in Vietnam. The phrase was in me. It was even more deceiving. Because it was similar to the phrase for sorry which is Zinli that was year one. The following three years were full of similar mistakes. Tonal languages are tough. Part of me was hoping you've been announcing that you're a hot dish while passing by people for all these years. Hot dish, coming through, hot dish. My family always had a cup next to the bathroom sink in case you needed to rinse your mouth after brushing your teeth or maybe get a quick drink of water in the middle of the night. My grandma had the same cup at her house. I used it for years, whenever I was thirsty. One day she saw me doing this and said, don't use that cup. That's where grandma puts her teeth. One time me and my little cousin were brushing our teeth at the same time at my grandma's. She had to have been maybe seven, ash, and grabbed the pink cup and took a sip before I could stop her. And the dentures came at her and her eyes got so big, she just put the cup back and left the bathroom. Edit, wow thanks for the silver. I'm gonna tell her that the fake teeth coming for her has given me so many internet points, although she probably doesn't even remember. This is why I drink straight from the tap. No middleman. No danger of dental cup. Now dental water may be a thing, but I'm certain the water I drink is not dental water. One day I used the key fob to remotely start my dad's car. It was an oh shit moment for him. Two years and he didn't realize he had this handy little function. My dad bought an aftermarket remote start and took it in to get installed. When he went to pick it up, they asked him what was wrong with the factory one. One day I accidentally hit a button on my extra key, fob in my new, to me, car and it started. I was baffled. Then when I went in, and tried to put the keys in, and hit the brake, it turned off. I sat there for a few minutes, trying to figure out what was wrong. Then it hit me. I have a remote starter. Edit, key info. Also, I lived in Boston, tons of people had remote starters this should not have confused me this much. When I first got a debit card and would go out to eat at restaurants with my friends, I would leave a cash tip on the table. When I got the receipt to put how much I was paying I would write down how much money I left on the table for at least 6 months I gave double tips to every waitress I had. Edit, word. I did this to a pizza guy once. I gave him a cash tip, and when he gave me the receipt, to sign I put down how much cash tip I gave him. He told me whoa you're giving me more. I was like, is that not how it works? He said he'd correct it for me once he got back to the store. I felt pretty embarrassed. Why didn't he just give you back the cash? I thought about that, after I closed the door. In the moment it never crossed our minds. 
I used to fill the kettle by the spout. My parents have always done it this way. I thought the center part was mainly for decoration, but not functional. I don't know why I never questioned this. One day I bought a new tea kettle and my husband was like WTF what is inside this, and with great ease, opened the center to pull out a manual with instructions and whatnot. I was drinking dirty paper water for like two weeks. Okay but why did your parents do this in the first place? Ugh I don't know, maybe I should tell them. Take a pic of what the manual inside your parents kettle looks like. Not mine, but my dad has been spelling his name wrong his whole life, he's 51. His name is Jeffrey, and he's been spelling it like that, since he learned how to spell his name. A few months ago my mom pulled out his birth certificate, and we all learned it's actually spelled Jeffrey. Not sure if he spells it correctly now, but it was definitely an oh shit moment for him. Grandfather thought his name was Harvey his whole life. Got his birth certificate at 65 and it's Harmon my first gold. Thanks. My aunt and uncle gave my grandmother a copy of her birth certificate for her birthday, apparently she had never had one. On her 77th birthday, she found out she was actually 78.